Hey, what's up, guys? Rona Man here. You know, the world is so desperate for female executives in tech that they're willing to do anything to achieve it. Uh, they're willing to exaggerate, lie, um, you know, purposely ignore something, you know, anything that, that can make things seem more fair. You know, we as human beings, we really like fairness, you know. And, and it, what's funny is even animals like uh, chimpanzees, when they're given grapes, let's say there, there's a famous uh, experiment where there was two, two chimpanzees, both of them happy in their cages, and they started giving grapes to both of them. And they could both see each other, two cages next to each other. And they gave, but then they gave two grapes to one monkey or chimpanzee, and then one to the other. And then, of course, the one that was getting the one instead of the two, you know, he could see that the other one was getting two. So he got very upset, started throwing shit around, tipped his water bowl over, tried to tip over his cage. You know, he was really pissed off, which is crazy because he was getting no grapes before that, and he was totally happy. But when you start giving another monkey more grapes, then the other monkey gets very upset. And so human beings have this desire for fairness, even if it's at their own personal detriment. So I understand when human beings want to see women in tech. I personally am, am, am not against that. Um, it's In fact, the reason why I'm not against it, let me just say, I'm not just saying that to be politically correct, because I actually like, I think that there are geniuses out there that are going to improve our lives. You know, there are the, the outliers that are females that are going to change our lives and, and come up with new inventions that make life better for us. We can't look past them. We need to welcome everybody. Humanity needs every genius it can handle. You know, in the past, many times a genius would be killed or burned at the stake or something, and that was a great tragedy and that slowed human progress. So I'm all for uh, any sex to succeed in any field. Uh, what I'm talking about in this episode is when we want it too bad. So society wants it. Obviously, make that community doesn't want it, but it, the the media, let's say the media created this this woman here. Let's talk about Elizabeth Holmes and Theranos. Okay, so if you're not reading about this, is a new breaking story. Uh, this seven hours ago, this article here, but it's it's really hot. And just basically in a nutshell, this woman here, some people would say she's attractive. Uh, anyway, that's that's often a situation when somebody gets a lot of press is they tend to be attractive or some people think they're attractive. Uh, so either way, she was called the second uh, Steve Jobs. Uh, and she got all kinds of press. I mean, she got all kinds of press. You can see her here uh, in Inc. Magazine. And she also was very glowing uh, profile in Forbes Magazine and many other magazines. So basically, this woman, let's look at her story here. Let's see, where is it here? Uh, let's see, back to that. Is 19 years old. She came up with this story, an idea uh, that, uh, you know, basically there was a, a machine that you could just prick your finger with uh, and the blood could be tested for diseases. And uh, this would be much easier than putting a needle in your arm, which people hate needles. And so it was going to be very innovative. Now, this was the idea of a young girl. It wasn't a machine. It was not real. There was never anything real. Uh, this was just an idea. So what she did was she took this idea and she brought a lot of very serious people on board, including George Saltz, George Saltz, the ex-secretary of state. Um, let's see, Malcolm, uh, what's his name? Um, oh, the Australian uh, uh, newspaper magnate. Either way, the, he, she brought in a lot of famous people around her. I think Bill Clinton, too. A lot of famous people around her. And she said, you know, she had all these stories. She had these great stories. Seem like everybody likes these stories these days, uh, you know, and and so basically they're going to make the world better, you know, blah, 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 blah. The problem was the machine was called Edison, right? You know, and, and also, you know, the reason why she was called the Steve jo next Steve Jobs was one is she was able to raise a lot of money and get a lot of money, which, by the way, is not how Steve Jobs got to be Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs got to be, be who he was by bringing the personal computing revolution to the masses, and, uh, you know, by, you know, he changed the world. He really changed the world. I don't like this where there's the next, the next, the next, because it's, it doesn't, it's never even comparable. I mean, this woman basically raised a lot of money on a lie, an absolute childish lie that there's this magical machine that can do a hundred tests 
uh, of it, blood just with a pig pinprick. It's a great idea. I'm sure at some point this will be reality. We will be, you know, we will be living on Mars or in some other galaxy, traveling, you know, 10 times the speed of light. I won't have to take a shit anymore or whatever. But uh, that time is not now, right? Right now we have to go to the bathroom, wipe our asses, and uh, we have some great technology, but um, this machine was not one of those things. Uh, and so, you know, nobody really checked into her. It's, it's a sad thing. She's a woman. Everybody was on board. She's the next Steve Jobs. She's the greatest. You know, everybody gave her money. You know, nobody thought to uh, actually talk to the employees until there was a guy who actually did. Uh, Bill, uh, let's see, Bill Morris. Yeah, what's his name? John uh, Cario, a two-time Pulitzer Prize winner. He was the guy who uncovered this. Uh, him in conjunction with George Schultz's son, who was working with... Uh, Theranos, working at Theranos, and together they basically found out it was completely bullshit. Like people inside the company knew that the blood that was getting sent to them, the tests were not being done by the Theranos machines. They were sending it out. This is how much of a scam it was. They were sending it out to get tested in other laboratories, and then they were, you know, they had all this money, right? They had this free money the investors gave them. So, you know, they didn't have to worry about that profitability. They could just go ahead and do kind of fool you as long as they could. And finally they got caught. Uh, she had to pay, I thought it was a pretty small fine, $500,000. Now she can't be on board a board a company board for 10 years. I can't believe she didn't end up in prison. It's it's kind of amazing to me. She, she hoodwinked $700 million out of investors. Uh, you know, I don't understand why she got such a light sentence. Maybe there's some mitigating factor that I don't know about that hasn't been released yet. That's possible. Or maybe because she's a woman. I don't know. You know, she got special treatment, obviously. Uh, the next Steve Jobs, you know. Uh, it's not easy to be called the next Steve Jobs. Very few people get that label. Uh, Elon Musk is one of those. Uh, but uh, she got it pretty easily, you know. So you can, you can you know, make up the, connect the dots yourself. If, if a guy who raised a bunch of money on a total scam, uh, like Bernie Madoff or something, would be called the next Steve Jobs, no idea. I can't see it myself. Her wealth, uh, her wealth went from four point five billion dollars to nothing, <laughs> nothing, right? "Quote unquote nothing," right? So she basically is amazing. She's not in jail. Uh, don't know what happened there. Don't know why she didn't go to jail. But one of the most common reasons why people, you know, say that we need females in uh, tech is is that uh, is that uh, females on boards bring more honesty. You know, they bring, they bring honesty, they bring, uh, what's the other thing, better communication skills, uh, which is funny because this woman was absolutely not honest at all. And she also was not a good communicator or she purposely was not a good communicator because whenever anybody asked her about the machine itself, uh, she uh, said some pretty funny things. Let's see if we can find that in here while I'm looking for this, I'll, uh, Let's see. I don't think it's that link here. She, she, she was. She was. This woman was a crack up. She was. She, she didn't know anything about anything. She had. She had no, no background, no tech background. Uh, she was a, a girl with a dream. That's basically what she was. You know, like everybody gets a, um, everybody gets a trophy now. Well, now everybody gets uh, seven hundred million dollars, in investment. Right. That's what it looks like. Oh, I don't know where it is. Oh, dude, I, I lost the link. Either way, there was a hilarious quote when it, when a reporter asked her how the machine worked, and it was like she 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 obviously didn't know. Well, there was no machine, right? That was the problem. But she didn't even know how to pretend like there was a machine. She she was getting all these hand jobs from everybody, being all the magazine covers. She forgot to study her story. Like when you're running a scam, right? You have to understand what your scam is, what your story is. She couldn't even explain it. Like she basically said, like. Well, the blood goes in the machine, there's a chemical reaction, and that reaction goes somewhere else and is shown to somebody else, and eventually uh, the result comes out, or something like that. You know, she, she basically couldn't even, uh, she couldn't even, like, explain her own scam. She wasn't even, she was so, she was, you know, what that tells you is, is that she got so many softball questions. You know, she never was, her feet were never held to the fire, they say, you know. She never was really tested. 
everybody just kind of bought her story. She's the next Steve Jobs. She wore black turtlenecks like Steve Jobs. Uh, you know, that was about the only thing that she did like Steve Jobs is she copied his uh, fashion sense, which I don't think was very good. I never thought, I never was into the Steve Jobs fashion thing, which who cares, right? But if you're going to copy it, you know, a woman, you know, you'd think. But obviously it worked for her, right? She so worked for her. She had come up with this uh, fake machine and she raised $700 million. I, I can't understand why she's not going to jail. I really don't get it. I hope more comes out about this. So keep watching this Theranos thing. And every time that somebody recommend, you know, says that female executives are going to impact corporate boards, there's some real research here about, about the real result. And this is written by a woman. Uh, but basically they prove that there's never been any real studies of this. There's no, there's no, nobody's out there really checking if female boards actually perform better. They, they use uh, examples that are like, basically they, they, it's not, they don't prove causality, you know? So for example, if you have more money successful, you tend to hire more women in the board, right? It's like, it's kind of like ice cream and murder. When people eat more ice cream, murders go up, right? Now there's, is there a causation? Is, is one affecting the other? No. The reason why is because in the summer months, it's hotter, uh, so uh, people eat more ice cream. Uh, so that's why murders go up, is because people are outside, they're out of the house, and they're 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 doing things. They're you know that's when murders rise in the winter time when everyone's locked up in their house. Uh, murders are not that high, right? So that's kind of like that's the kind of argument that people often use when it comes to corporate boards. Uh, but any any deep dive, I'll put this link below into the causality or women in boards. They don't show any. Um, there's no relation. Now, that's not saying that there's a relation to negative board performance or performance of stocks with women on the board. So keep that in mind. Is everything that we see is that it's kind of even men and women on boards. There's no difference, right? If they belong on the board, you're going to see the same result. Uh, but obviously, if you put a, somebody on a board or in a high-level position who is not qualified, then you're going to have substandard results. So I'm going to give you one example here before I go of uh, Jerry Young was you know the founder of Yahoo, the co-founder. And before he left or got forced out, he made the most lucrative bet in Silicon Valley history, and that was the investment in Alibaba. He gave $1 billion to Jack Ma in China. Uh, which is a very serious investment. You know, some people would say lucky. You, let me tell you something. You're never lucky when you give somebody a billion dollars. You know, if you give somebody $10, like you buy, like, say, a, a scratch-off card, and you win a billion dollars, that's lucky. If you give somebody a billion dollars, you never can call it luck because it's just too... You put your skin in the game. You made a serious, serious bet on something. Uh, but he made a serious bet on a very smart guy and he put it in, he put it into um, Jack Ma and Alibaba and actually two people did this one was Jack uh, was was uh, was this guy here Jerry Young and the other guy was Masayoshi Son in Japan of SoftBank and both of them got similar uh, returns they invested like a billion dollars they got like 37 billion dollars back so you know it was, a, it was a nice chunk of change and because of that thing the reason why I mentioned in this is because Jerry was such a genius and he was so ballsy. I mean, you, what else can you call a billion dollar investment on a Chinese tech entrepreneur? I mean, nobody thought China was going to do anything with tech, right? I mean, he took a major risk. This is an American dude who took a major risk. It, it, the money could have been stolen. It, it was a holding company. Alibaba had a lot of risk. But Jack Ma, he rose to the challenge. He, he built uh, a company that beat eBay in China and now is is, is uh, challenging Amazon on many levels, including AWS. Uh, many things you're going to hear more and more about Alibaba Cloud, trust me, in the future. Um, but he made a bet with that guy in the very beginning. Now, the reason why I mention this in the podcast is because that extra, you know, almost $40 billion came in very handy and Marissa Mayer took over the company after that. And while she was running the company, that $37 billion hit their bank account. And so what happened was she was able to, you know, have the biggest cash payout. I mean, no companies get $37 billion in their bank account suddenly. It's just so rare. It never happens. You, you never get this kind of free money. It's not from investors. 
It's 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 just like, hey, here's some money. Somebody made a good bet for your company. Now go do something with it. So if we saw a very superior, she was from Google. She ran, I think it was Google Ads. She was pretty pretty fairly techy, but she did nothing with that money. In fact, Yahoo's just gone downhill since then. So she got $37 billion and she wasn't able to invest it or do anything with it. Have you heard of anything, Yahoo, of anything? Artificial intelligence. Their search engine even got, got deleted during the, her period. It's now Bing. Uh, Microsoft Bing does the search results for Yahoo. So they lost their core business while she had a 37, you know, huge, 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 huge war chest. They did lost the race for artificial intelligence. Uh, I can't really think of anything they won, to be honest. Yahoo and success are not synonymous anymore, although they were in 1999 or back in the very beginning uh, when Jerry Young was running it. So don't want to bag on her too much, but just, just to say that in this article here is, is like, you know, unicorns and rainbows about Martin Marissa Mayer, but it wasn't the case. Same thing we saw uh, with the Theranos uh, and Miss Holmes is we didn't see we didn't see anything special. And, and that's and like I said, that's what you should expect. I mean, if you're expecting a woman or a man to be a fantastic CEO just because of their sex, you're out of your mind. You know, nobody deserves a free opportunity to run a company. You have to earn it. And if you start putting people in positions that don't deserve them, men or women, you're going to see a lot of bad financial results. And so right now, it's women and people are saying, oh, put women on the boards, it's going to increase profit. But every single study that looks into it does not find that any causality between women on the board and higher profitability. And whenever you put someone as a CEO, we're seeing a lot of situations like Meg Whitman, uh, Marissa Mayer, obviously Elizabeth Holmes was not only a bad a CEO, but she actually was absolutely dishonest liar and committed a lot of felonies uh, in and lied to a lot of people, raised $700 million dollars. Uh, from from um, unknowing investors. So we're not seeing any more honesty. We're not seeing any more financial performance. We're not seeing any more fair treatment of women. Uh, if you look at the new CEO of Uber, I guess they have multiple CEOs. They, the, the, the publisher of Ebony Magazine joined Tesla as a CEO uh, last week, I believe. And she runs a magazine which is failing. And in fact, they're now being sued by their own freelancers for not paying them for writing. You know, so what I think what we're seeing is we're seeing something like there's this hope, you know, society has this hope. We want to see things fair. And I think that that desire is a is a is a fine. I mean, I have that desire, too. You know, I'd like to see uh, fair th things happen. I'd like to see people get an equal shake. I'd like to see that. But what they're confusing is hard work, success and fairness, you know, is is people have to earn it. And if you make women earn their positions, you're going to see, mark my words, you're going to see successful CEOs in tech companies that are female. But if you if you hand out free things, you're, what you're doing is you're hampering, you're hampering the real people with skills and you're, you're tending to gravitate towards scammers like Elizabeth Holmes, is that she has a very good story, right? People that are very good at their jobs are often not very good with people. They have bad people skills. They're very good at tech. They're very good at programming. You know, they don't like to speak in public. You know, geniuses tend not to be the life of the party, you know. And the CEOs that I know are just a lot of them are not that, you know, when you're hanging out and having a barbecue with them, they're not the greatest. Uh, they're not the most charismatic. And that's fine because their job is to is to focus on some very serious stuff, right? It's uh, it's they're. Profit and loss, right? That's what they're they're focused on, right? And uh, increasing profit, uh, you know, P and L, right? So let's let's stop this craziness where we're handing top level positions to people that don't uh, deserve it. And again, not bagging on whoever gets it. I mean, if you can get it, if you can become CEO with no skills, uh, if you look at uh, uh, Susan Malden, who was a music music major, who became the chief security officer for Equifax. She has every right to do that. Obviously, it destroyed the credit for 145 million Americans, and many people will 10 years from now still be, be fighting charges uh, that uh, they didn't deserve from some Russian hacker because their their social security number was stolen, their birth date was stolen, 
their mother's maiden name, all this information that we use to uh, verify accounts was all stolen and will be used against them. So it's not a good thing. It's not in anybody's interest to be promoting people that don't have the skills, especially in tech. And the last thing I want to say is that if we keep forcing American companies to hire people not based on skills, we will see companies from other countries like China, uh, like Japan, uh, superseding our companies because we're just like, we're one, we build the blueprint, you know, and then we hand it to them. Like, here's the new business. It's, uh, you know, search engine. They come up with something like Baidu. Baidu is a you know, very powerful search engine. We create the model and then we hamper our own companies. They take over. It's a natural thing, right? So let's stop doing that. Let's look realistically at what's going on here. And this, this, this Elizabeth Holmes thing, I'm just watching this thing, just laughing the whole time because the next Steve Jobs, she was the next fucking Steve Jobs. Oh yeah, the next Steve Jobs. So next time you hear the next Steve Jobs, just start laughing, male or female, just start laughing and say, oh, let's take into this one a little deeper, you know? She, this woman didn't have any background in blood testing. She was in some laboratory in university. She dropped out of school at 19. She wore black, black turtlenecks to look like Steve Jobs. I mean, it's so obvious looking back, right? You know, it's so obvious, you know, but uh, people just don't want to see it. People want to see, they want to see this rising star, this girl with a dream, you know, this kind of thing though. Let's, let's, if, if you're, if you're listening to this and you're female, I know uh, about six, 7% now of the listeners are female, which it blows my mind. And there's a lot of people here with daughters and things like that. You know, raise your daughter to have real skills to study things that matter don't you know study artificial intelligence study programming study science study engineering study things that 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 you know that have a future don't study things that are going to be you know destroyed by uh, automation in the next 10 years think of the future study the hard stuff do your hard work now so you have a good you know the harder you work now the easier it is in the future right so same with all our kids same with all our friends and same with our family. So don't fall into this total bullshit. I guess I'm kind of going on and on now, but uh, I just, this kind of gives me a, uh, it gets me all riled up because I remember when, when, when Jerry Yong made that investment, I was in China. I thought it was genius. And I, I know, I think he never got the credit he deserved. That's the flip side. Hey, yeah, this is the last thing is the flip side of giving all your credit to, to people like this scammer here, Elizabeth, is, is that you don't give credit to people that deserve it. You know, this Jerry Young, man, somebody should be calling this guy up and interviewing him uh, on Forbes magazine now because he saved the company. He was the guy who saved his company after, and he got kicked out for it. He got kicked out. He had to, he had to resign because, because of they weren't having good financial results, but they weren't taking into consideration the bet that he made with Alibaba when they were doing those financial results because it was too early. It was just before that. Before Alibaba decided to do an IPO, it was the third largest IPO in history, you know, uh, you know, absolutely massive um, Alibaba IPO in the in the United States, right? So it was kind of before they knew that was going to succeed. A lot of us in China, we already knew it was going to succeed. A lot of my friends worked at Alibaba, spent a lot of time in Hangzhou, which is where they're uh, they were based, and I knew a lot of the people working there. So I knew that Alibaba was something special. Uh, I don't say I knew the future, but I knew that. I knew that Alibaba was a lot more powerful than Americans knew, that's for sure. And I was not that surprised when they came to America and succeeded. And I'll give you one last thing, is that Tencent is even more powerful than Alibaba. So if you want to look at an interesting Chinese company built by Pony Ma in China, very smart guy. That guy does not get the credit he deserves. He has done an excellent job of building that company and also of never giving in to advertising. He's always kept it very friendly for the users. So his users get more and more and more and more loyal. And he's going to monetize it slowly rather than burn it to the ground, uh, tell a bunch of lies, or or even to misuse his trust of his, of his users. He's building a very strong company. And that I respect. So Rona Man signing off. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys have a good day. Please share and uh, like. Uh, this is not a hate channel. We're not here to hate anybody. We're here to look at the truth, to figure things out, to look in depth at stuff, you know, and to find what's really going on. So thanks. If you like it, share it. Thanks a lot, guys. See you.